flight numbers. They're something we only usually remember for those few moments when we're looking for our gate at the airport. But this year, two flight numbers have become tragically ingrained in our minds. On Saturday, March the 8th, flight MH370 disappeared from radar shortly after takeoff from Kuala Lumpur. 239 people were on board. The plane has never been found. The agony on the faces of the relatives was horrendous. In Kuala Lumpur, they tried to ambush government ministers in a truly desperate search for answers. In China, where most of the passengers were from, the relatives gathered at a Beijing hotel. Daily, they were updated on progress. There was none. And they grew ever more convinced of a conspiracy. All of them are still waiting for answers. Defying belief, four months later, on July the 17th, another Malaysia Airlines plane came down. MH17, 298 people, victims of a war which had nothing to do with them. Sometimes during the course of our work, we meet people whose lives and stories are truly astonishing. In Seoul, South Korea this year, we met a woman who I will never forget. In graphic detail, she told us of her life in a North Korean prison camp. It's testimony like that which has made the issue of North Korea's human rights be raised right at the top of the United Nations. Perhaps there will be some change within North Korea. We spent a lot of time this year as well in Hong Kong. Pro-democracy protesters have posed the greatest challenge to Chinese rule since the handover from Britain in 1997. On the face of it, the protesters have comprehensively failed. None of their demands have been met and they were cleared on a few weeks ago. But look at how young those protesters are. They're all Hong Kongers. They're not going anywhere. They've certainly given their message to Beijing, and I've little doubt that they will be back.